was uh, something that just surprised the whole world. It's a big challenge to the existence of Europe and to the history of Europe. The only war we are at at this moment is the war against the pandemics. Decretar el estado de alarma en toda España. But we will continue to do everything. everyone uh, good morning afternoon or evening depend when you are based today and uh, welcome to another session of forward leave um, the event of the forward community today we're going to talk about the hospitality the future of hospitality and we got a session very well represented with one of the brightest minds in hospitality Please welcome Philippe Convert, president of uh, Relais Chateau. Alejandra Batallier, uh, member of the board and vice president of Shaw Wellness Clinic. And Raul Gonzalez, uh, CEO of Barcelo Hotel Group. And of course, uh, my beloved Lorraine C. Leo, founder of Focus Right Research. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming here. And um, just let me uh, encourage all the audience to make donations uh, to World Central Kitchen, the NGO of the world famous chef Jose Andres. That, uh, well, all of you know, but they are struggling to feed America and and Spain, and of course all the all the countries they are working in all the countries where uh, there's a, a need so please make your best and, and make donations you can find the link just beside the video please lorraine very welcome all of you thank you fabian and, and welcome everyone and as fabian said we are also one of the goals is to get donations for the World Central Kitchen COVID-19 emergency plan. So thank you all. And I want to welcome our speakers because we do have a three extraordinary leaders in the hospitality industry who joined us today. And of course, we're all here because of the scourge of COVID-19, which has taken a toll on all of our lives, both personally and professionally. Seems like on the business side, no industry has been hit harder than the travel industry, and no segment has been spared. But it does seem also particularly hard on the hospitality industry. You know, we all see the figures with um, occupancy rates as low as 0%. Smith Travel Research saying that it could be a 50% decline in rev par for 2020. Now, these are numbers, of course, we don't want to hear. Operators, owners, managers, investors in the hospitality industry are really up for a big fight this year and lots of serious challenges. But we also are seeing some encouraging signs, encouraging signs in China, and we're all following that. And we, there are certain things that we are in control of, certain things are not, but certain things we are, and as operators and, and owners and, and decision makers in the hospitality industry, some things we can change, and some things we can control, and, and perhaps make even better for uh, when we do recover and our hotels are back and full once again. So again, I want to welcome you all, and let's start, let's start our conversation, if you would, with an update on what business is like right now. And we know it's not very good. We know there are, there are lots of lots of challenges that you're dealing with. But in what sense, especially for you know Philippe and Raul, where you're operating on a global scale, can you tell us what you're seeing, what's happening? Do you still have some properties that are open for some reason, um, perhaps because of where they're located? Perhaps your housing 
some uh, healthcare workers or whatnot. So I'd just love if you'd speak a bit to talk about the state of their business. And uh, Philippe, we'll start with you. Uh, you know, what do you see happening with uh, your Relais Chateau properties? So right now, uh, almost all our network um, is uh, uh, closed. Uh, the, the, the properties are almost all closed. Uh, more than 90% of our properties, we are uh, in uh, more than 60 countries and uh, they almost are all closed now. Uh, the, the last one, the, the country, uh, uh, important country, we have an important delegation in Japan and uh, they were still open, but due to the uh, decision of the government, uh, half of them are already closed. And what we see is that the, we see some reopening. And uh, one very important one, and which is uh, uh, on one way a uh, signal of hope, is a property, uh, a restaurant in Hong Kong, uh, Vicky Lo, uh, with a very talented chef there, uh, who just uh, reopened uh, two weeks ago, but with drastic regulation, uh, with uh, a reduction of uh, almost half uh, the, the covers uh, that she used to have in the restaurant, uh, with um, something which, which appear for us as European very strange, like taking the temperature of any uh, uh, guest entering the restaurant. And this is something very surprising for us. Uh, so we, we can imagine right now in Europe, of course, wearing masks would, would, would come something quite normal in, in the next month. But it seems to us for the chef, and we are uh, one of the most important network of uh, the most awarded chef in the world, uh, they are still reluctant to impose to their guests where where is a place for pleasure uh, to impose them uh, regulations such as uh, entering um, you know a, a place could be dangerous and um, we just have a, a call with the the president of the uh, French agency for tourism à tout France and he was telling us that the first thing we will have to implement is something like a shock of confidence uh, going to our properties to our hotel and restaurant uh, must not be perceived as anything uh, dangerous for the health so i think that our guest uh, will look first uh, to safety place with uh, guidelines and uh, where everything is taken in consideration for the health. Right. So, Philippe, you mentioned the restaurant that opened about two weeks ago. You said they're taking temperature. Is that for the patrons as well as the staff? And what yeah. other precautions are they taking? They, they take a lot of precautions. Uh, uh, as I mentioned already, uh, wearing masks in the Asian culture is very common. Huh? And it is, uh, it is entering in our life now in Europe or in, in, in the States, but uh, it's something we are not accustomed to. And, and especially uh, when, is, uh, when we are speaking of a, a place where people are coming for leisure and for pleasure. Um, so coming back to the experience of Vicky, uh, she's only following the health regulations provided by the local government of Hong Kong. And that means that there is an obligation of disinfection of all the restaurant each every two hours. Uh, uh, she has to, uh, uh, to reduce the number of cover, as I mentioned, and no more than four guests may sit in the table. So that means that even if it's a celebration of uh, uh, something, uh, a family event, uh, a family cannot meet there. Uh, no more than four. Uh, there she was also uh, obliged to put some screens between one and another table. And uh, of course, wearing gloves and the temperature, which is not the least 
uh, of the of the uh, norm there. Well, it's good news to hear that the restaurant is reopened. And though you had said some of the chefs feel guilty, they should feel also happy that they're giving some people more of a sense of normalcy. Eventually, we're, we're all going to need to feel that. So that's good news. And I, and I wish great success there. And, you know, Sir Raul, can you talk a little bit about what's going on with your properties at Barcelo? Because you, you know, obviously, again, you have uh, properties around the world and you see some impact uh, different in some regions than others. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine the toll this has taken on, on the hotel. So can you, you know, give us an update? Uh, um, we have at the moment uh, properties more or less in Europe and the Mediterranean area, um, in the Caribbean and in the US. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have some properties in other countries. I, I will try to explain now a little bit. In, in Europe, the first hotel that we closed was in, in Milano, in the north of Italy. Um, we tried to maintain the hotels in Rome open, and during a few days, was more, um, the market was still more stable, but in a few days, changed completely and we closed the hotels in Rome. Um, later so where on, are we now? It was kind of mid-March? When did this start? Uh, no, at the beginning uh, in, in Milano was uh, eight, uh, March 8th, hmm? mm -hmm. at the beginning of March. Hmm? In, in Spain, um, we closed the hotels uh, a little bit later, started uh, roughly one week later. Hmm? Uh, our idea at the beginning was try to close um, in the destination that we have more than one hotel, try to uh, reduce the capacity in the same destination to try to maintain the purpose level. Mm -hmm. we, the idea was try to, to have open the hotel with a more standard, with more uh, quality mm -hmm. and uh, give to the, to the guests an upgrade to this hotel. No? But it was so quickly that in a few days we, 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 we closed all the hotels. It was very complicated because uh, I remember at the mid of March when the alarm, um, the, the government said that it was an alarm uh, situation, they say to close the hotel in one week. And we had hotels in the Canary Island with 90% occupancy at that time. And when we speak to the guest, you must leave the hotel to uh, a German people or a Swedish person say, I am much more happy here than in my country. Why I must uh, leave the hotel? That, that is the authority say, is, I'm sorry, it's life, no? And um, um, we, we have closed all the hotels in Europe all the hotels in North Africa. We still have a couple of hotels opening in, in Dubai. Uh, one hotel is working like a, uh, like a similar to a hospital with, uh, for uh, doctors for only for the, the illness. We have uh, also in Casablanca another hotel that is helping to the, to the people, another in Spain with this uh, idea. Uh, in the Caribbean, we still have 10 hotels open, with a very low level of occupancy, very low, but still we have 10 hotels open. This is in Dubai or? Uh... In, a, is a, in Mexico, in the Dominican Republic, in those countries. In Mexico, the authorities have said that if you have one customer, you must still open the hotel. And we had one hotel with more than 500 rooms with one guest. Hmm? It's a crazy situation. The unique country where we have hotels um, open are in the US. Uh, in the US, we are running 126 properties and actually are open um, 110. That means the majority of the hotels. And when I am talking with other operators in the US, 
is the country of the big market that maintains the hotels open, but with a very low level of occupancy, 10%, something like that. But you can see a big difference between cities tier one and cities tier two and three. If you are more big, more international market, the occupancy level is lower. If you go to a tier three, more local, more domestic, the occupancy is clearly higher. And I think this is one of the big differences that I can see. So your properties, and you mentioned some of them that have maybe one or two people and you still need to operate. How do you afford to do that? Because then you still need to pay your staff. Yeah, of course. Obviously, it's a minimum um, number of employees, but you 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 must maintain open all the all the services. Obviously, the, the air conditioning or the hot water or all the all the costs, all the utility costs, mm -hmm. and part of the staff. Huh? And it's a it's a little bit crazy situation, huh? but uh, we still maintain a few properties open. I am not sure if we can maintain the situation in the next week. Hmm? But I think one of the key points now is if, like, if together about the new reopening in each country. Because the problem is that we don't have a clear idea when we can open the hotels and what's happened with the region of the, of the customers, of the guests. If uh, Spain is uh, is open, but the UK is closed, is is very difficult to predict. It's only local market. And I want to get get to that a little bit later. We talk about reopening. So yeah, uh, yeah so Alhamdra with uh, the Shah Wellness, like you have a beautiful property I, and I can't imagine the impact on the wellness industry right now talk a little bit your challenges well it's very it's very interesting to see the impact that this uh, sanitary crisis is having on the wellness industry um, when this happened as as others uh, other colleagues said before it's been very quickly uh, we were opening and having a very high occupation uh, this year it, it started being a very promising year with a big increase in operation from from last year and on the moment that this happened we were running uh, around 90 percent occupation and we had similar cases of people who didn't want to, to leave sha they felt uh, for the fact of being on a, a clinic environment, uh, they were somehow protected uh, in a bubble. Uh, they didn't want to leave back home. Uh, they didn't want to take a plane. I don't blame them. Uh, but, yes. Uh, so, of course, we had to close following uh, Spanish government uh, instructions. Um, we g give to our guests a few days uh, to plan their way back home, and we help them to rearrange their, their travel plans. Uh, it's true we've seen a um, very remarkable decrease on the number of requests we receive uh, on, a, on a normal scenario, but we still receive it for the fact of being a wellness and to being a health-oriented property. We're still receiving many requests on a daily basis, and we are seeing an increase, especially in these last weeks, on people that are more than ever wondering about their health, their well-being, uh, and they're planning what to do when this is over. And they are, and of course, health and well-being is, is coming to, to their top of, of mind. Huh? Are you taking reservations for future stays, or is it just too much of an unknown right now? Well, it's very difficult to have a reopening date uh, at the moment. We haven't announced any reopening date. It depends very much how the situation evolves, uh, not only in our country. On a normal scenario, we have around 80% of business coming from abroad. So even if we are able to, to reopen uh, and continue with our activity, if we don't have the possibility of welcome uh, international uh, tourists, uh, it wouldn't make much sense uh, for us. Of course, for everyone, uh, local tourists is going to grow after this in comparison with other. 
and we're going to see how governments first we're going to see how consumers are going to try not to take a plane and how they're going to try to stay home for the immediate vacations and then we're going to see how many governments and tourist associations are going to be promoting national tourism so uh, of course we expect that percentage to grow for the coming months uh, and the, let's say that international trees it will take a bit more to come back on the next coming months now i think as you mentioned with wellness you still have your guests coming to you for advice and so it must be a very important initiative for you to stay close to your guests to your customers your future customers your loyal customers and how are some of the ways you're doing that well at the moment you know uh the, the the big question once something happened like this so quickly it's is how to capitalize this time you know how to act quickly and uh, one of the key points as you say is to wonder how to keep connected and how to keep uh, supporting your audience uh, during this time so we've been uh, developing very quickly systems uh, to be offering online consultations to to our guests uh, to be offering even online sessions and offering from uh, advice from our medical team, uh, advice from uh, our therapies uh, for people to stay healthy at home. And then, uh, of course, to use this time to make improvements on both strategically and facility level, uh, to improve our post-stay connectivity with the guests, to train and motivate uh, the teams and then dedicate time to, to work on strategies to emerge stronger after this, to look for opportunities. Always crises are opportunities at the same time, to reimagine the future and uh, to dedicate time to get to know how the consumer will be after this crisis. I want to talk a little bit about government assistance. And of course, that's so important at this time. And in the US, there's the two trillion dollar cares act and you know about 500 million or so put aside for small businesses some of that going to hoteliers and it's not quite so clear exactly does that go that goes to payroll you know, what about some of the other expenses that the hospitality industry still has to, um, including in real estate mortgages whatnot so it's probably not enough of the hotel industry, but you know it's something to at least haul you know, with, with staff and, and to to keep staff on payroll. So obviously it's a little difficult question for you if you work in multiple regions, but can you give us some idea? You know, we'll start with you, Philippe, on um, for for some of the properties that you work with represent. Do you do you see that they're getting some government relief right now? How is that working? How is that helping? Well, of course, it's very different uh, uh, for one country to another, one continent to another. Uh, Europe is much more social, I would say. Uh, we have uh, we have big helps in Europe uh, uh, on the uh, an, uh, unemployment fund, uh, very proactive, and uh, also uh, help uh, from the government to support uh, all the. Um, um, all the companies uh, in hospitality and tourism. So this is big health, but it's not the case everywhere. Uh, I uh, We had a call last week with one of our most talented uh, uh, member, Derek Joubert, who is the National Geographic, uh, um, uh, very well-known uh, uh, um, uh, photographer um, and he says uh, I'm running a, a property with more than uh, with, uh, different properties in uh, different uh, countries in Africa uh, with more of 600 um, staff members and uh, he told us you know the team uh, is the company so I have to personally take care of them and without any public help I need to find and to support them because at the end, uh, at the time of the rebound, uh, it's, it's, it will be uh, impossible uh, to, uh, to reopen without them. So it's, uh, it's different. Uh, in, uh, as I was telling you, in Europe, uh, we have great support from the governments everywhere in Europe, I think. 
And uh, that gives uh, all our members a great hope. Um, but uh, what we are facing now is uh, try to figure out uh, when we, we can reopen. And the timing, the time is very important to us now. And there is um, no, uh, no, no certainty on this, uh, on, on this side. And that's the biggest challenge. Because maintain a, a, a team, uh, it's, of course, it's very important. It's key, but for a long time. And, uh, and what we know, and, and this is even for countries with a strong market, such like UK, uh, France, Germany, Switzerland, etc., a strong local national market. But even then, uh, there, we cannot see uh, uh, a time where our properties may reopen. Uh, we hope, of course, July, August, but you know, we are already on a long Time. We are not on the short time, and we all know that this sanitary crisis will not end overnight. Uh, Raul, and how about with you with the financial situation as well? And of course, you know, Philippe is saying, you know, the sooner we open, the better. But don't we need to be prepared to say we may not open till the fourth quarter? And how do we do that? Is there enough government assistance for your properties? So what is the financial situation looking like there? It's still for me? That uh, was for Raul. Oh, OK. I think that um, the, the European market, in particular, I think is very fragmented. A lot of small companies. And I think this is a uh, a very important point. I think that the majority of the companies have not enough uh, balance sheet for uh, supporting the actual situation. Because it's not easy to find a sector that can stop to zero. It's not possible to operate at all. It's not a reduction, it's go to zero during several months. And you must have uh, enough liquidity to maintain the business, no? Um, I think this is a big issue. Second is, um, I think that the, the governments, I agree with Philip uh, that the European countries are very social, but I think the, uh, the, the things that have did any government are very different. When I compare, uh, one country to the other, uh, you have countries that the government pay 80% of the salaries until close to 7,000 euros per month. Hmm? You have another countries that the government say, I help to you with the security uh, social cost and you pay only a small amount of money during the fourth major close. Hmm? But only that. I think the difference between one and the other is completely different. All of them try to be social, but the approach, I think, is very different. Right, right. And depending by the region. So do you see some properties being more at risk than, than others because they're not getting the financial support that they need? I think that we will see many companies that have not the capacity to, to maintain the situation and they will go to to a bankrupt or they, they, they will need help. Obviously, the, the government is trying to, to help different countries with finance um, uh, assistance, assistant, but I think that will be not enough. I, I think that many companies don't have the capacity to survive. Especially as you do have some properties that are still operating and you do need still to pay your staff. Because if you compare with other countries, uh, for instance, with the U.S., you have more um, the owners of the properties normally are big funds, big uh, financial investors. But in Europe, you have also some financial investors, but you still have many, many, many owners that have one property, two properties, 
they don't receive any revenue at the moment. It's very difficult to maintain. Very yes. difficult. Yeah. And those are the ones that are most in need of help, and hopefully, within Europe, they will get the assistance. Do you foresee when when things do open up a certain percentage of properties that just won't be able to make it through? If it's say fourth quarter, no. Well, I think that we'll see uh, different behavior uh, depends on the property. Um, so if you're thinking in the Balearic Island or Canary Island in Spain uh, are properties that 90% of the business is coming from abroad for international markets. The, the destinations with more international market, they will need more time. Mm -hmm. uh, you, If you think in the hotel with more mice, meetings, events, um, congress, will take more time. If you have more leisure, more local market, you can will open clearly earlier. Hmm? But uh, I don't know. I was want to ask to to Philippe. Yesterday I think Mr. Macron, uh, he w was not very clear about the schedule. No, say festivals, hotel, restaurant, bars, July, but all all thing all together. I have not a clear idea that the message. No. What, what we have understood from the message of President Macron is that uh, there is no, uh, no possibility to reopen for hotel and restaurants, of uh, restaurants at least, uh, before mid-July. Uh, uh, mid-July. Do you think that we, we have all we have all understood that? Uh, it needs okay. also, to, of course, to be clarified because it's always depending on the uh, advice of uh, the. Um, the the, uh, the medical advice uh, because yeah. there is a, a special uh, uh, special counselors uh, that uh, uh, advise of the government but we all understood and 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 more importantly when we are we in France for instance we have a, a strong uh, local market but we are facing a problem there is that there will not be a deconfinement uh, uh, for all the region of France at the same time. And this is very difficult to, to handle because that means that probably uh, some region uh, will be authorized to reopen earlier than others. But uh, the main source market in France is uh, Paris region. And if Paris region doesn't reopen before two or three months, this will have big consequences on the summer holidays. Yeah. Of yeah, so logistically, obviously, there are all these issues in terms of reopening. But and, and mid July does seem optimistic, but but it'd be interesting to see how that works and how that um, you know, we'll be watching because I I'm not sure in the states exactly when uh, we'll be seeing our restaurants reopen here. So we'll be watching other regions very carefully. But I want to kind of look ahead because we're, we're talking a lot now about the state that we're in and the confusion that we're in. And we are seeing some trends, as you said, in terms of secondary cities versus the main urban areas. And there are some other parts of the world. You mentioned Hong Kong is starting to open restaurants. But with your particular operations of what needs to happen to get, just to get the customer to feel secure again, to feel like I want to go out and I want to dine at that lovely, I want to stay at that beautiful spa. I want to stay at that hotel. What's going to have to happen? So I want to start with you Alejandro because you you, know, you have this, this property that is obviously going to be welcoming back guests hopefully soon, but what needs to happen? How did you operate before? And I'm sure of course you were under strict sanitary standards before, but what do you need to do now to really convince your guests that it's safe to come back. Well, this this pandemic will cause uh, cause changes not only temporary but permanent uh, in our industry more than in other industry. Uh, and it's key to be pioneer and innovator in in these changes uh, and not simply to follow them. Uh, it's key to monitor what establishments are doing in countries that are leaving the COVID, like in China. Um, I think. 
definitely the mass trains, cruises, large resorts are going to be more affected than uh, luxury hospitality or like wellness uh, resorts. Uh, we're going to see very aggressive uh, commercial strategy by establishments. Uh, and I think this has a very risk component, of course, uh, to, to recover those rates uh, on, on the time. And we're going to see a big change on what uh, consumers are looking for. No? And definitely uh, seclusion, space, cleaning, security, of course, health are going to be some of the prioritary values that guests uh, are going to be looking for. So we, we're going to be moving from that experiential and integrating with the community, not feeling a tourist through integrating uh, on the community, etc. To looking more for for seclusion and more for a retreat uh, feeling uh, at these points. No, in terms of uh, communication, I think a majority of the brands uh, have tried not to speak about COVID on this month, month and a half we had when this situation started until we had to close our properties. And now we're going to see the opposite. We're going to see how brands and how hotels. Uh, speak much more openly uh, and communicate about what they are doing about COVID and trying to transmit this safety in order for uh, consumers uh, to, to feel uh, safe to visit these uh, destinations. We're going to see the categories of villas and residents uh, being the most value accommodation, basically uh, a key value is going to be a space. So we're going to be people putting, enhancing everything related to, to a space. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's, it's, it's a big uh, question mark uh, when we're going to get back to a normal situation uh, after all this and how it's going to be that new normal. No? So I ask, do you agree with Alejandro that luxury and wellness will likely recover, say, maybe before mid-scale properties or urban properties. Hmm. But that was an interesting comment that luxury, you know, what, what should recover first, kind of luxury and wellness versus say, you know, the mid-scale. How do you see that, Philippe? Well, of course, uh, Rene Chateau is, uh, uh, are small properties. Um, the average size of a Rene Chateau is no more than 30 rooms. So I agree with Alejandro. Alejandro. Uh, the space is very important. Uh, we are all the Rene Chateau properties are in remote uh, places, remote destinations, uh, back roads, I would say. Uh, so we we were it's a part of our DNA. Uh, we were born in uh, 1954 for this reason, just to promote all these uh, uh, properties uh, uh, lost in the countryside, I would say. Uh, so uh, that fits very well with uh, who we are. Um, and um, also, I will agree that uh, the most important will be to maintain the link, link with our guests, what we are doing with the social network. We have a lot of creativity, innovation now, and we see, for instance, all uh, our chefs uh, who are at home in their kitchen sharing their recipes with their guests and making them dreaming of the, the memories, the good memories they have when they were traveling to all these relation to properties. Uh, and other example, uh, very important, we, we had a, a Zoom video conference uh, with a property in the north of Italy, uh, inviting uh, all the guests uh, to, to share, uh, 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 I would say, a, a cooking class of doing uh, carbonara pasta, you know, and uh, this is exactly the type of um, and and one thing very important we we as we were celebrating uh, uh, seven years ago our uh, 60th anniversary we were at the UNESCO and we decided all together all the Relais Chateau chef to say what we propose to our guest is something very local uh, and uh, our vice president Olivier Rollinger used to say when you see a dish a plate 
this should tell you something about the place where you are and uh, that's the the local um the local food ingredients and uh, the local communities are also will play a very important role in the in the in the new way of traveling and discovering regions yeah, very important to stay connected so i'm yeah. interested in your perspective, Raul, uh, back to the question about you know, will it be luxury first before mid-scale? Yeah. Uh, my personal common sense uh, tell me that uh, luxury can be uh, better than mass market. Because I agree that the space and not a lot of people in the same place uh, can be an issue. But the figures that I have at the moment and the information that I have from other different places tell me that at the moment luxury is losing the battle. Hmm? The mid market is performing better than luxury. Probably because the people with more money they don't want to assume risk. Probably, I don't know. But at the moment in China, in Korea, in other countries, when you analyze SDR or I talk with the CEOs of big companies, they tell me, raw luxury is suffering more. Second is between corporate and leisure. I think leisure seems that is more ready to come back earlier than the corporate, the business travel. And in related with the, how we can adapt the hotel, the, the concept, to the to the to the guest to the new situation, I think that we will see some standards that we will change in the long term. That probably are good standards are more clean uh, the for the employees for the guest. But I think that other standards will be only for a temporary period. Is like uh, different phases. We are now very focused because we are very worried about. But the other day I talked um, with um, a company that the headquarters are in Mali. And they explained me, Raul, with the Ebola, we change a lot of things. And at the beginning, we tried to demonstrate to the guests that we was very strict with all the standards. But after a period of time, the same standards transmit to the guests in certainty. There was not, there was worry, more worry, because if they have the, the face mask, uh, after several months, they think, be careful, this hotel must be, have a problem with Ebola because they have a lot of new uh, regulations for try to protect the people. No? And is at the beginning, probably made a lot of sense try to change things. But in the medium term, probably imagine that we have four months, six months without any virus. If we still maintain some standards, some procedures, some protocols, probably the, the result is the opposite that we expect. Hmm? So a couple of things, first of all, I've been following the industry for quite a while. So I agree with you, Raul. I mean, we saw after 9-11, we did see leisure coming back a little faster and we saw that people were staying, looking for deals. So the early adopters would be someone, I don't know if it's a younger traveler or just a traveler who's looking for, wow, this is a great deal. I can stay perhaps in a luxury property, but it would scale prices. Uh, that's also something we saw that happened during the Great Recession here in the States in 2009. The same thing, we kind of saw looking for these great deals, how that that helped some of the scale properties. And also that's when we saw also a big boom in online as people were looking for kind of more last minute types of travel. And, and it is, leisure a more flexibility for the leisure traveler whereas for the business traveler there's a lot more restrictions but i want to go back to when we're talking about this reopening with, with these three gentlemen here of some specific things that we might see like do you feel like we're going to be 
uh, taking our temperature of our guests. We feel like a lot of people, millions perhaps, will have already had the virus, so maybe they're virus free. Will, that, will there be some certification that they are? Um, will there will be closing pools or they'll be closing restaurants and doing more room service? Can you be a little more specific at some of the things you think you'll see, at least like you said in the beginning, a few months out, hopefully things will go back to normal, but at least in the beginning to get that first wave of travelers back and feeling secure. So I'm, I'm gonna start with you, Alejandro. Um, definitely we're gonna see significant changes uh, one side, on one side is is of course regarding sanitation protocol uh, where we're gonna see uh, different levels uh, from sanitary cleaning products uh, and reforced cleaning protocols air purification systems uh, and different technologies for disinfection uh, are going to be um, introduced on in the industry and, and in haste put in value. Um, regarding the coming months, uh, we're going to see the possibility of uh, um, COVID-free certification being asked for guests, or even in our case, we're going to be offering uh, the fast COVID test for any guest uh, who is uh, wanting to visit us. We've, for, we've been already before closing, like one month before closing, take, taking temperature of, of our guests and asking them from reservations department if they have been to any of the countries that were at that time uh, the focus uh, of the infection. No? So definitely we're gonna evolve uh, on that uh, protocol. I think it's impossible to avoid completely uh, that someone that it's, it can be a focus of contagious uh, comes visit uh, our property, but definitely we will do uh, our very best to try to keep, uh, to offer safety to, to the rest of the guests. And Philippe, what about with you and, and your properties that you represent, what, what are you saying in the temperature checks as well and what else do you see? Uh, first, we will uh, follow the national protocol because we need, we are under the control of the health authority authorities in each country so it, it may be different from a country to another uh, what we need at the beginning will be uh, what we call a chalk of confidence uh, because all our guests and even our staff members they will look for health safety uh, health safety of our employees health safety of our guests but i agree with Alejandro; it's very difficult to guarantee that a guest will not be a no, what we call a no symptomatic uh, wearer of the virus, which is another big story. So uh, we are in the public areas, so it's very difficult to to give this uh, this kind of guarantee. What we will uh, be prepared to to do is provide all our properties worldwide with the mask with the gloves we we saw uh, in japan you know glove gl uh, mask uh, where they you can see the mouth eh? it's it's not uh, it's not like uh, um, the, the one that where the the the, the medical uh, um, uh, team so it's we need to adapt and we need to uh, to provide all our guests with the maximum of confidence going to our properties. And Raul, how about with you? I mean, do you see, is that practical to do, to test you know, temperature tests? I mean, wh what do we need to do to ensure that our staff and the guests are healthy? And also, I just wanna, you know, add with properties and with pools and with restaurants, is that something to consider, not having those open right away? Yeah, I think I have explained before that probably we'll see different phases. I think in uh, the first stage, after uh, reopening the hotels, we will be mm, we will need to be much more strict, and probably later on we maintain some uh, protocols, uh, but not all the protocols. Um, I think that uh, we have hotels with thousands of, of guests at the hotel, and probably we can take the temperature, but the buffet we can uh, eliminate the buffet because all the people want to have um, individual packets 
but at the same time, it's not good for plastic, it's not good for other reasons. Uh, we must try to find a balance. And we, we are working now with the tour operators and with the customers to, to understand what they want and also to obtain a certificate. We work uh, with a third uh, party company that check uh, all our procedures in health and safety. Every month they come to the hotel and double check the kitchen or the cleaning, or every point is doing well or not. Hmm? And we will reinforce this kind of uh, relation with a third party company and try to obtain a certificate that we are doing all the big protocols, obviously, like Philip say, related also with the national authorities, because we'll see different standards in the country. We'll see some standards that are absolutely the same everywhere, but you will see differences between the countries. So certification will be very important going forward. So we're all hearing that the customer will never be the same, the traveler won't be the same, the industry is changing, but then so is the traveler. They're changing in many ways. And perhaps, of course, spend is, is important because for many people who are unemployed, the travel won't be the number one discretionary spend as it has been in Europe for many years. You know, perhaps people will have to think about the household needs, the practical needs first. So that's number one. Uh, and number two, the travelers obviously going to be more wary, going to be particular. So, you know, just quickly, can you, you know, each go around and talk about how you feel the traveler, your your guest is going to change. And I'll start with you, Alejandro. Um, very, very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying to, to keep very active on participating in different webinars. I'm trying to understand and dedicate some time to see how this traveler is going to change. As I said before, I think uh, people are going to be looking for different things that they were looking before. Definitely um, health and wellness. This pandemic is making us reflect on different aspects of life. Uh, definitely the care of our health and our well-being is one of those. No, Many people are not uh, being able to this confinement uh, to keep their weight, are not being able to exercise. Uh, are suffering anxiety, are not sleeping well. Uh, definitely well-being is going to become even more uh, prioritary after this, this time. It was already growing uh, twice faster than traditional trees. And I think this is going to uh, increase that uh, rhythm of growth. Uh, on the other side, um, I think people uh, will be valuing small, small things in life. Uh, we're going to see, for example, uh, short, shorter stays in terms of holidays. Uh, we're going to see sabbatical uh, trend becoming more important. When this is over, of course, people will be looking to get out of their houses and go on holidays. But at the same time, people will still going through difficult times with their business. And they're going to need to keep uh, connected, and it's going to be a priority for for uh, hotels to offer solutions for people to keep connected and uh, with with their business. Um, in terms of rates, I think um, consumers uh, may not be uh, as ready to pay what it's not. A, a reasonable rate. Let's say we won't we won't be seeing what we've seen on determinate destinations, especially hot destinations. It could be I don't know Saint Tropez or Ibiza, where you could see on a peak season uh, unreasonable rates in terms of quality and price. And I think uh, consumers uh, will be more than ever looking to pay competitive prices after this. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I'm sure that uh, well, uh, well-being will be uh, very important, uh, especially after this uh, this uh, health crisis. Uh, what we see already, we have uh, implemented a program, what we call the Villa program. Uh, beside our relational properties, we have very often a private home uh, with all the services. But uh, what I, I I call sometimes uh, um, hospitality with privacy. Uh, being able to have all the services that you may expect from an hotel and a restaurant, even with, to have a chef cooking for you at home, and you are invited your friends, close friends. Sometimes it's a uh, friends of your kids, uh, family, and so uh, two two couples with a very good uh, uh, with kids that uh, are at the same school. They they rent. Uh, one of those villas with all the facilities, swimming pools, and and so they they benefit of uh, privacy with an uh, uh, hospitality. So I'm I'm quite confident that after two, but it will take at least two, uh, one two or three years, depending also of the evolution of the medicines of a vaccine. There will be a new life, a new way of traveling after this terrible health crisis, but I'm very confident in our industry to recover and uh, to be able to be creative and uh, to ensure our guests uh, the, the promises of uh, uh, an healthy and, uh, and well-being life. I think guests will be looking for, some, for villas and they'll be looking for some secure spaces uh, Raul, what do you, how do you think guests will change? Yeah, I think that the, um, when we had 9-11, um, many people thought that we never take a plane again, no? It was a shock, no? It was difficult to believe that we will take a plane again. But uh, a couple of years or three years later, we, we take many, many planes, no? Um, that means that probably at the beginning, all the people will be a little bit care. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, sometimes when I think in, in, in our industry, I still believe that it's a very, um, very good uh, sector. The people want to travel. And in some cases, I think that when they come to sunny places, uh, Spain or Italy or uh, Greece or Turkey or, or uh, the Caribbean, I think that in many reasons, is a healthy reason behind the decision. Is when I remember a conversation with a person from Alaska, and I asked to the to the person, uh, Alaska must be very cold, and he told me, "Wow, the problem is not the temperature. The problem is that I need the sun. I need to see the sun for healthy reasons. If you live in in Sweden, in Norway, probably." You can stay in your apartment, a small apartment, all the year round. But probably after one year, you need to come to a sunny place for healthy reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, obviously uh, probably the people um, will, um, after a period of time, I think all of us want to enjoy life, want to uh, say is like we have um, a big illness in your life and change your life because they, you want to to make all your dreams i think that is not exactly the same but is the timing for say i want to do that i want to do that when i am free no i'm probably i hope that the people want to travel again after a period of time mm -hmm. i i think we should end on that note i think that was said very well and we all have a passion to travel. Obviously, we love to travel. We love to travel to Europe, and we love to travel in beautiful places. And it will come back, hopefully sooner rather than later. And I certainly admire all of you for what your challenges you're going through in business right now. And also, thank you. You took a lot of time out today to be with us, and it's very much appreciated. Okay. Thank, thank you, Thank you very much. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.